Hello. This part of our virtual summit is dedicated to talking to a very competent physical therapist who will explain some of the things that anyone can do that will help their state, keep their body in balance and, and be able to work and move properly. And that is a way of continuing to do that into uh, their, as they get older. So I'd like to welcome today Marisa. Hi, Marisa. Hi, Dr. Kalsa. Thank you. Um, Marisa is a doctorate in physical therapy. Uh, she's been teaching at USC, and uh, she's developed a uh, cancer program uh, for cancer survivors, physical therapy program. And on top of all of that, she's also a certified yoga teacher. So, Marisa, tell them a little bit about yourself. Yes. Um, what led me to physical therapy in the first place was my own experience as a child and uh, high school and college athlete. And then, um, as a young in my young adult, I developed cancer. And going through my own rehabilitation process, whether it was from a sports injury or from recovering from surgery or chemotherapy and radiation led me to study uh, and achieve a doctorate degree in physical therapy, but at the same time, um, I discovered yoga as a way to help me with my long-term complications from the cancer treatments, and yoga basically became my home program, kind of like physical therapists give you home program, I used yoga as my home program. Great. Well, let's start by telling me a little bit about physical therapy. Yes, most people don't really know what is a physical therapist, and I like to start off with that physical therapy, it's a combination of the science and the art of healing and movement. And the whole purpose is to either restore function, improve function, or maintain function for all the activities that a person needs to do throughout their lifespan. It's also the prevention and diagnosis and treatment of the physical complications that occur as a result of many of the common diseases. It could be arthritis, it could be from a stroke, it just could be from a sports-related injury or shoulder tendinitis or low back pain even. Mm -hmm. And um, the main thing that's physical therapy, what we do as a profession is we evaluate movement. And so we will do basically a movement analysis. We'll listen to the patient's uh, complaints of their pain, how the, how the injury or the trauma or the deficit started. And then we'll do an evaluation and we'll look at how the joints move. Do you have adequate muscle length? We talk about that in terms of flexibility. Um, do you have the, enough muscle length to perform that movement? Uh, do you have the strength? And this is where a lot of people get confused because strength has many components. There's the muscle endurance component, and we all know long distance runners, how lean they are because they have, a lot, have built a lot of endurance muscle fibers. And then when you need strength or hypertrophy and power, you can think of bodybuilders. They have a lot of uh, hypertrophy and they have a lot of power. But the how you develop that strength of either power or hypertrophy or endurance is quite variable. So you have exercise for overall general health, overall cardiovascular health, digestive health, all general exercises, like if you just walk or ride a bike or go to a gym. But once you have an injury or you have arthritis or you have osteoarthritis or you have a tendinitis, then that rehabilitation from that problem is very specific. And so physical therapists are really uh, trained to dose the very specific exercise that you need mm -hmm. at that time. But, but to gain strength, power, and endurance, it has to be increased over time. So you often hear us talk about, you hear anybody, fitness trainers, physical therapists talk about sets, reps, and um, frequency. And those components are, are varied greatly depending upon what your goals are or right. what your needs are. 
So obviously, if someone learns to move properly and develop strength on different dimensions mm -hmm. at when they're younger, that's something that will reduce you know, lack of movement, lack of flexibility, lack of strength as they as they get older. Is that correct? Yes. And and the problem with as we age, and I'm not talking about going from twenty to thirty, um, but as we age when we get into our fifties and sixties and seventies and eighties, um, we you know, our hormones play a big role. And so you tend to do if you're not using it, you lose it. So your muscle you lose muscle mass. And that is maintaining muscle mass and increasing muscle mass as we age is one of the key components to be healthy and to be free of pain. Muscles absorb a lot of force. So especially with people who have arthritis or have whatever injury they have, you need muscles because they absorb your body weight against gravity um, and they keep you moving. I, we have this expression that movement is life and life is movement. And when we quit moving, the quality of our life is severely uh, decreased. Mm -hmm. And so physical therapists will tailor your exercise program to your individual needs, your individual body need restrictions or impairments. But our whole goal is really to optimize function and optimize movement so you can have a good quality of life as we age. Mm -hmm. Can you give me an example of how a physical therapist would prescribe a certain exercise. Oh, absolutely. Um, so let's talk about one of the most common uh, complaints we have, and that is low back pain. And we're going to demonstrate later um, how to properly do a squat or getting up and down from a chair. But let's take low back pain. So low back pain has many causes, but when you actually look and exa examine the patient, the most common impairments that people have is one, maybe they've lost flexibility and so their hip flexors or their iliopsoas muscles is shortened and tight, or their hamstring and or I should say, their hamstring muscles, which is in the back of the leg, are also short and tight. And when you lose flexibility, that available motion has to be compensated someplace else in the body. Mm -hmm. And if you lose flexibility in your hips, then more than likely, especially during a squat, you might compensate by moving your pelvis. And unfortunately, that compensatory movement pattern then causes other problems in the lumbar spine. And other muscles are what we say the muscles have to overwork rather than using the correct muscles. So when we do a squat, we, we're going to use our buttock muscles or our gluteals. You're going to use your quads, and that's going to give you the power or, and the strength to lift your body up against gravity out of a chair. But you have to have the flexibility in certain muscles to allow that to happen. On the flip side, muscles also give stability. And you need to have a nice, stable spine and pelvis so that your legs can do their work. Well, that means you have to be able to recruit your core abdominal muscles, and you have to have strong, what we call your back muscles or your lumbar paraspinals. So you have muscles that provide stability so that you can generate the power and the strength that you need against gravity, and in this example, to come up out of a chair. And usually, people with low back pain, as a physical therapist, we're treating all of that. Now, you can maintain, uh, once you get your improvement, and you maintain, and you get your length, and you get your strength, and you get the muscle power, then a yoga class is a great, is a great way to help you maintain that flexibility. Or going to a gym and working on a stair stepper or a bicycle to help maintain some leg strength, or just going for a walk. Um, also, you know, at the gym you can do some resistance training which will help with that hypertrophy. So what I'd like to emphasize is if we can maintain a reasonable amount of flexibility and not lose muscle strength as we age, then we set ourselves up for having a, a much more functional life as we age. And so there, I'm going to show you one or two very simple exercises. Um, 
but they are difficult. If you have knee pain, hip pain, back pain, you need to seek medical advice first because they may not be appropriate. What I'm trying to get to you is the across is the idea of how our muscles and our bodies need stability, they need flexibility, and they need strength and power. Good. So is there special applications of this that you can talk about when someone does have chronic disease, like heart disease or yeah. diabetes yeah. or cancer? Great, yeah, great question, great question. Um, yes, the top three diseases in our country are heart disease, uh, cancer, and diabetes is very high up there. Uh, and unfortunately, all of those involve a chronic and inflammatory response. And when our bodies are all under inflammation, um, our when our bodies uh, are dealing with an inflammatory disease, um, there's a lot of metabolic activity going on and a lot of production of immune system cells, etc., um, to deal with that. So when someone is recovering, let's say from cancer, or in the, in the instance of somebody having diabetes, we are trying to use, ex exercise is really medicine. And that's the thought process I want you to think. So when someone has cancer, they get uh, very weak, they get very atrophy. The chemotherapy has a role in that, but just being uh, deconditioned and recovering from surgery, chemo, and radiation, your whole activity level decreases. So those individuals will need a very specific exercise program because what will happen is somebody will say, oh, just go walk. And you take, if they just go for a walk, they may be walking too fast. Their heart rate, they're very deconditioned in their cardiovascular system. So their heart rate might, they might be walking where their heart rate is way too high. So they might be basically using an, in the anaerobic metabolism uh, phase. And they will be exhausted, and it will take them a lo much longer to recover. And creating so, more stress. Creating more stress. So part of the role of a physical therapist is also to set the parameters for how what your target heart rate is while you're doing your exercise. In, di in individuals that have diabetes, both resistance training and um, cardiovascular exercise has a very positive effect on removing glucose from the bloodstream. And then actually, if, you're type, if you have type 2 diabetes, if you get the, on the right exercise and eat the right food, you can actually potentially decrease either the medication, the oral agents, or even the insulin that you have to take for your type 2 diabetes. So exercise is very, very powerful. Um, and when we talk about osteoarthritis, which is a most people, a lot of people deal with as they age, um, you need really strong muscles to absorb the force of walking against gravity and being active against gravity. And exercise has been shown via research uh, to relieve a lot of the pain that people have if they have knee osteoarthritis, for an example. So we, we tend to underestimate the benefit of having strong muscles, having a good cardiovascular endurance, um, and we do really don't think of exercise is medicine, but it is, and like if any other medicine, it needs to be properly dosed and monitored for adverse effects in those populations. Makes a lot of sense. Good. Well, let's, I really want to have you show our, our the, the people who have registered for this summit um, some actual things that they can do, like you mentioned how to stand up from the mm -hmm. sitting position. Great. I want you to show that. I also want you to show them um, more about this flexibility that you were talking okay. about. You were talking about the hamstrings. Mm -hmm. And uh, we'll do, if you could do a demonstration of that, would that work oh, out? Oh, it'd be great. I'd be happy to. Okay, good. Okay, so we're lucky enough to have Kate come and participate in this video. And she is going to demonstrate um, how to perform a hamstring uh, flexibility stretch. So you at home would lift your knee up so that you are perpendicular or your lower leg is in a straight line to the knee and then a straight line down. All right. Then you're going to go ahead and just see if you can straighten your knee to its limits 
without moving your pelvis, your low back, your hip, any of anything else. You can also you can put your hands around your knee to stabilize if you need to do that. Now, if that's is that a stretch? Okay. So I'm going to have her, at this point I want her ankle or your ankle relaxed and she's just going to, you're going to hold that stretch anywhere from 10 to 30 seconds and this is a good time to just practice your breathing techniques and so you can just inhale slowly, feeling the stretch, a strong moderate stretch in the back of the thigh and it may even come below the knee, exhaling and once you hit a, a good point. Maybe you, if you haven't done any stretching, maybe you stick with 10 seconds at first. And remember, if you're going to count, it's 1,001, 1,002, 1,003. Take a rest, and then you can repeat it on the other leg. But, but I want you to do it a minimum of three repetitions each leg if you need to. So, what? I, go ahead and relax for a second. So, um, now we're going to show you the same thing. But if you have calf tightness, I'm going to have you point and flex your ankle. So you're going to lift your leg up to that 90 degrees, support it with your hands, stretch to your limit, and then you can flex or, or pull up the toes towards your face and point down. And you can repeat that five to ten times and you're going to notice this, you might feel a tightness or a pull in the calf and behind the knee. Then I would have you repeat the hamstring stretch. Again, at whatever her limit is, strong, moderate stretch, not painful. You can inhale and exhale. Very gently count 1,001, 1,002, 1,003, 1,004 for anywhere from 10 to 30 seconds. And then you can relax and bring your leg down. There's many different positions to do this stretch, but this one is usually the easiest to start with because your whole spine is protected and well supported. Okay, so now we're going to talk about the proper mechanics or the proper movement pattern of getting up and down from the chair. So as you can see, Kate is sitting, and as you can see, this chair, she's kind of leaning back. And that's very common. There's a lot of chairs at home, especially the easy boy chair sometimes are any big overstuffed chair, sometimes we're pretty far back. So from this position, Kate, can you just show me how you can get up? Okay, perfect. Okay, so go ahead and, uh, go ahead and sit back down. So first of all, if we want to strengthen, let's say she does have that low back pain or you're experiencing low back pain. Remember we talked about certain muscle groups. We talked about the buttocks muscles, we talked about the quad muscles, we talked about the abdominal muscles, and we talked about the lumbar spine muscles. And so we talked about this balance of uh, or the motions that are needed or the patterns that are needed. We need a strong, stable trunk, so we need to contract our abs, we need to have strong lumbar paraspinals. And then we want to use our powerhouse muscle, our buttocks and glute muscles, and we want to use our quads to actually push us up against gravity. So the first thing I want, Kate, or if you're doing this at home, the first thing I would have you do is first of all sit up straight, get your trunk over your pelvis. And sometimes it may mean you need to slide forward in your chair, it just depends on how deep your chair is, but I think this is okay. Okay, second of all, you may need to have your feet just a little bit underneath you. So I'm going to talk you through this. So first you're sitting upright, and we have an expression called just pull the belly button to spine. So I just want you to tighten the abdominal muscles a little bit. Hopefully, as we age, everybody tends to use their arms to push up out of the chair. And the reason is that is because your glutes and quads are weak. So practice getting up and down from a chair with proper mechanics is going to help your lower body muscles stay strong as you age. So next thing I would have you, Kate's going to demonstrate, but I would have you lean forward from your hips. So you bend forward, not rounding, rounding back up. 
not rounding like this. You still notice how we're keeping the trunk nice and straight and stable, and you're bending forward from the hips. You tighten your belly button to the spine, and then you're going to push through your legs and squeeze your buttocks and your thighs. And then when you come down, sometimes we call it a skier squat or a chair squat, I want you to stick your butt way back and lower slow and notice, we'll have Kate do that again because I want you to notice how well she made that stability in her spine. So one more time, you lean forward from the hips, pull the belly button to spine, squeeze, push your heels through, squeeze your buttocks up, 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 up. Great. And then when you're ready, you're not going to slouch again. You're going to bend from the hips again, reach way back in that chair, and lower yourself down slow. Because you've got to get the quads help, or the top of the thigh muscles help lower you back to the chair. So this is a great way. You can even just start off with doing two or three repetitions before every meal. That way you can start to practice the proper movement pattern, and then depending upon your individual situation, you won't overdo the exercise because you always have to check for joint or muscle soreness. But anyway, this is some helpful hints to keep you moving as we age gracefully. Well, that was really, really helpful what you showed, and uh, it's so great, you know, to have you, Dr. Perdomo, here showing um, the things that you have so much experience and so <laughs> much knowledge, and uh, people really need this. Um, uh, so, there's more information about Dr. Perdomo on her uh, speaker page, and uh, I encourage you to, to read that and, uh, and uh, get more information about what she's doing. So, again, thank you, thank you so for much. inviting me, and I'm very excited about the summit. I'm looking forward to hearing about the other speakers. <laughs>